Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 85 and we have a good one for you today. Today's fish is just absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm going to be honest, I had very little knowledge of this fish going in and it quickly became one of my new favorite fish. Today's fish that we're going to be talking about is... Bam! The blue spotted jawfish. So the blue spotted jawfish, or scientific name Opistonathus rosenblattii. Um, again, that is Opistonathus rosenblattii. It is part of the family Opistonathidae, which is the family of jawfishes, actually. Um, I mean, I, 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 let's just stop right now and admire how gorgeous this fish is. Um, it's just up there. <laughs> um, it is native to the Gulf of California, um, which is also known as the Sea of Cortez, which is this section of ocean that's um, right, you know, California's there, this is Mexico, it's this real long bay slash gulf. And this gulf is known to house a lot of unique fish and be a sort of mecca for sport fishing. It is known to be a very very important spot for people going sport fishing um, but that's where these little guys are found they are found in deep coral reefs with really cool water almost cold water um, you can find them at average depths of around 18 to 24 meters which is 60 to 80 feet sometimes you'll find them deeper I saw some people say 90 110 uh, some people say shallower, especially young. Um, they seem to be a lot younger, or a lot shallower, maybe 30 feet or so. Um, but you can probably figure about that 60 to 80 feet, that 20 meter range is probably where you can find them. And they're really found on like sandy bottoms or rubbles, like really, it needs to be really loose substrate. And we'll get into why in just a little bit. Um, it is a small fish. Um, it averages probably 10 centimeters. Um, that might be on the higher end. Like that might be the average size adult. So you can think about four inches. 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters is equal to about four inches. Um, and if you couldn't tell, it has this really elongated body. Um, this long, sort of eel-like. It looks a lot like a blenny, if you know what those are. And it's got this large head large mouth large eyes like when you look at the comparison of the eye to the body it's it's just massive this mouth looks like it could open all the way up um and it kind of does and it's it's got a square head too it's not like a traditional fish head it's like a squared bulldog head um just looks more it looks more beefier than it is um, it's got this extremely long, continuous dorsal fin that's actually yellow. Seems to stay yellow um, most of the time. Um, the background colors, you have this yellowish brown head that transitions to a darker brown that goes you know, towards the tail end. It just really blends in. Um, obviously, as the name would suggest, and as these pictures suggest, it's got these blue spots um that it's just absolutely stunning how bright these spots are this bright yellow eye with this oddly shaped iris um just overall it's a beautiful fish i mean i, I just can't say enough how this fish has struck me on this um now why do they have this large mouth well this large mouth, a lot of times when fish or animals in general have a large mouth, it's because they're eating large things. They're very predatory and they're eating things that are um, either bigger than themselves or they're trying to do a lot of things. This is actually not the case. Um, they possess these large mouths and they use these mouths to dig burrows. They will actually go in, scoop um, the pebbles and everything and then spit it out into the there cleaning themselves a little house you might have seen videos of this on the internet of different jawfish um spitting out their stuff from their burrows they constantly clean it um but they're actually you know going back to their feeding 
they're actually zooplanktivores, um, little tiny things. They actually just kind of extend their body out of the burrow and then they just kind of float there eating the, you know, almost microscopic little insects that are just floating around. And that's how they survive. That's their eating. They are very, very tied to their burrows. But something else that's interesting about the blue spotted jawfish compared to other jawfish is blue spotted jawfish are actually very, very social. Um, extremely social. They live in large colonies that can consist of several hundred individuals. Um, each individual has their own burrow and the burrows are spaced about one to three meters, which is about two to 10 feet apart. Um, but it's really neat. You'll have this entire burrow complex right in the middle and there, then you'll have a gap. So they actually do live in almost little communities. Um, and the burrows themselves can be as much as 30 centimeters to about a foot deep. There, there's a, we're going to be talking about those burrows for a little bit more and their jaws. Um, but it's not actually the interesting fact, I have to say. Um, so the powerful jaws. So these jaws are actually very strong. And it's used as a tool. They scoop it up. It's a shovel. They scoop up sand, coral rubble, broken shells, pebbles. And they build their burrows. So they take stuff out. But then they bring stuff in that they fit into their burrow to hold the walls because you have to think you know if they're in sand the walls could collapse well they put little bits of coral and shell to kind of hold back the walls actually building themselves a tunnel um something interesting about it though they will go over to a nearby neighbor's burrow and steal supplies apparently they will actually gather like a little pile of supplies like shell bits or you know bigger pieces of gravel so if they're not careful someone a neighboring uh jawfish will actually come over take some of the supplies that they work hard to gather and go use it on their own burrow and apparently it's just constantly happening um really really funny thing um they can be found in the aquarium trade they are expensive um they're about 250 dollars i doubt that they would be too difficult to take care of as long as you made sure that you had um, enough sand in the bottom of your aquarium for them to make a burrow um, you know there's a world of zooplanktivores um, in the aquarium trade that you can take care of so I imagine it's not too difficult but you do have to be aware that you are losing you know a foot's worth of water at the bottom of your tank if you want them to be happy and healthy um, now for the interesting fact that we're going to do one of the interesting facts we're almost we're, we actually have three interesting facts it's the very first fish friday where it's not just one interesting fact i have three um leave a comment on which uh, uh interesting fact you think is the most uh is the coolest but anyway so the first interesting fact is that apparently all jawfishes are paternal mouth brooders Paternal. That means that the dad will hold the eggs in its mouth. It incubates the eggs actually in its mouth. The times will vary across uh, jawfish, but it's usually around a week, week or so. And then the male just kind of like spits them out into the water. And then they float around. And then uh, about two weeks after that, a fully, a small jawfish, you know, that grows from the larva, basically dives straight down and it starts digging a burrow almost immediately um however blue spotted jawfish i i have some conflicting um reports on it some people say they are mouth brooders all jawfish are but some people say that they don't think that the blue spotted jawfish is actually a mouth brooder so i can't tell you whether it is or not but what i can tell you is that the blue spotted jawfish is probably one of the most flamboyant in their courtship rituals and they actually exhibit a lot of flashing behavior well how do you exhibit this flashing behavior when you look like this you know blue do their spots get bigger well the male blue spotted um jawfish completely changes color basically and here it is so a blue spotted jawfish male essentially goes almost pure white 
right behind the head and then very, very black towards the end of the body. Not the tip of the head because they spend a lot of time with just the tips of their heads extending out of the burrow. So it's still protecting itself. It's, you know, camouflage and a deal. And what happens is that the, when the male wants to exhibit its flashing behavior, it dashes out of its burrow about three to four feet, which is about just a, just a, think around a meter above their burrow. It dashes up, does a complete 180 super quick, and then pile drives straight back into her burrow. It's like it's scared. Um, but it'll do this a couple of times until a male is successful in attracting a female. A female will then go into the tube, the burrow of the male, and then for a few minutes, and then she goes straight back to her burrow, and then the eggs are taken care of by the male, kind of like, you know, like we were talking about, the paternal mouth brooding. I don't know if, again, I don't know if um, Blue Spotted, let's do it, but this color change is just crazy, in my opinion. Just absolutely phenomenal. This bright white with this um, dark background, it is just, it's so different than this, which is the normal looking Blue Spotted. So that's interesting fact number one. Interesting fact number two, is actually about the burrow. They uh, hide in their burrows at night, and how they hide is at night when they go to sleep, they completely seal the entrance, whether it's with a big shale, shell, whether they just pack gravel in, and then every morning, it rebuilds the burrow entrance. So they actually, every morning, they have to expend that energy fixing their doorway, basically, and make it to where it doesn't collapse in on itself. And then every night, they seal it back up. That to me seems very incredible considering how much energy goes into making the burrows and making the entrances to make it where it doesn't fall in and on itself. And now you're basically having to do that every single day. Just That's an interesting fact to me. I don't know about you. But the final interesting fact that we're gonna end the video on Again, let me know what you th which ones you think are your fa is the most interesting fact of them. The interesting fact that I found was the blue spotted jawfish was only scientifically described um, in 1991. People have known about this fish for decades, decades longer, 1950s, things like that. But it was only scientifically described in 1991, which I know seems like a long time ago but it's really not when you think about it considering that most fish species have been dis were described in the late 1800s um, to the 1700s like it's fair a lot of species were described way a long time ago unless they were recently split off these have been known about for quite a while and yet they were really only described 30 years ago that to me was really neat and it shows that the fish uh, taxonomic hierarchy is just constantly changing and new species are always being discovered. It's just absolutely incredible. But thank you guys so much again. I really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. If I don't, please be safe. Have a great day. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you do, I'd really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones. And peace. Also, thank you so much for the wonderful comments on the videos recently. They have been... They are very good motivation to continue doing this. But once again, take care of yourselves, take care of your loved ones, 